Good morning. How the brave, the brave, the few, the proud. How are y'all this morning? Y'all doing well? It's good to see you all out in the parking lot. Coach, you got your space. You're good to go. All right, we're ready to go. Ready to go. This is our last um, outdoor for the year. We'll be back um, in the, uh, somebody clapping? <laughs> Let me guess, the, the drummer set you up to do that? <laughs> anyway, it's good to have you here. So we're going to go inside starting next Sunday. Uh, same service, warmer location. Uh, less accumulation of snow on our, on our um, newspaper and everything. Okay, we're doing good. A few announcements. Together at 10 today, following this service in the Fellowship Hall, for all ages, invited to uh, gather at the Fellowship Hall for food, fun, and learning together this week. Drive-in worship again moves inside starting next week. Roanoke Valley Lutheran Children and Families today. That's the RV LCF. Just in case you're wor worried about how it's called. And that's going to be at St. Phillips off um, near Williamson. And that's going to be St. Phillips. We're going to have pizza and pups. Pizza and pups. What's that? Well, we know what pizza is. The pups is a lady who trains dogs for um, uh, therapy dogs is bringing some there. And the kids are going to learn how to treat dogs in the right way and how important animals all are in our lives. And that's at 5 o'clock at St. Phillips. And that's for um, all families with children in fifth grade and down. Uh, church office will be closed on Thanksgiving Day. Stay home and enjoy your turkey. The, um, again, the Roanoke Valley Lutheran Children and Families, the RDLCF, got it, uh, on the 3rd is going to Illuminates together. And you need to purchase your tickets online at RoanokeCountyParks.com. Illuminates information's on the bulletin online. Intergenerational Christmas pageant. We're doing this again. This is a lot of fun. Um, where else, where else except here at Christ Lutheran Church on um, Sunday, December 17th, will you have the opportunity to witness a Christmas pageant with an angel that's over 104 years old? Where else? Where else? And I thought to make it more exciting this year, um, I've got a zip line for Helen to take from the balcony down to the baptismal font. She'd she do it. She, if I asked her, I'd tell you she'd do it. But I'm not going to ask her. Anyway, no, we have a lot of fun. So what we do for the next, uh, the Sundays in December, the 3rd, the 10th, and the 10th, 17th, we practice. And you don't have to have a lot of practice to get it done, but it's good for you to be there. If you'd like to be a part, whether it's a reading part or maybe just a flapping your wings like the angels do. It doesn't matter. It's an intergenerational. It is, it is a joy, an absolute joy to witness and to be a part of. So for all, the, all those um, thespians in the rough who'd like to be a part of the pageant or angels in practice, come and starting on the 3rd of December, it'll be during the 10 o'clock together time. Toys for Tots. We have a couple more weeks. Um, till the 7th of December. There's a box behind me in the Narthex that we're collecting the Toys for Tots. And this is a great program um, through the through Marine Corps and through the Salvation Army. They ask you to bring a, t a toy, a, a children's toy, unwrapped. A new toy unwrapped because they put them for the kids to pick out. They get a voucher to take two toys each and they can pick from all the toys there. So a nice toy fits in the box, bring it in before the 7th. Uh, I have a, a special announcement too for one of our ministries that's incredible of outreach and support of families um, in housing shortages. Interfaith Hospitality Network, also called Family Promise, is a great ministry. It's been around for about 35, 40 years, and it seeks to keep homeless families together uh, in the same place overnight. A lot of our shelters are specific to men or women with children, and so it's hard for families to stay together. So the Interfaith Hospitality Network, Family Promise, seeks to have churches sponsoring and hosting groups of people overnight for a week at a time. 
Um, because of our preschool and the lack of, of showers here, we don't host in our building, but we have a building that's gifted to the community from Second Presbyterian, and we host by bringing food in for the evening for the, for the families, and then we need to have what's called an overnight host each night to stay with the family, just to keep things safe and, and comfortable and make sure there's any problems they get taken care of. Um, we are in great need for people willing to be overnight hosts. An overnight host comes around 9 o'clock and leaves at 7 the next morning. There is a bed and it's, you are able to get sleep. I get sleep every time. And we just ask if you're willing to do that. We're asking either um, a couple to come, husband and wife, or uh, a couple friends together. Together, um, I, I do it myself. It's, I'm very comfortable with that. But if you'd like to find out more information, talk to me, Tom Magri, or uh, Georgia Schmidt. So ask, ask these people about that or anybody else in uh, Family Promise. It's a great ministry of home. Even though these people don't have a home, we give them a place to call home for a short period of time. So we're looking again for overnight hosts. Let us know if you'd be willing to do that. Other requests are in our bulletin, and we ask you to, in our prayers, to, especially this week, to lift up the Freeman family um, as we celebrate the life of Greg uh, this Wednesday here at the church at 11 o'clock. You are invited. Other announcements are before you. Let us now prepare for worship uh, with the confession and forgiveness as it is found on page one of our bulletin. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Amen. Amen. Holy One, we confess that we are not awake for you. We are not faithful in using your gifts. We forget the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you in neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children. And Jesus, our beloved, opens the door to us. And through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome. In Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live and the promises prepared for us from the foundation of the world.
our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Righteous God, our merciful Master, you own the earth and all its people, and you give us all that we have. Inspire us to serve you with justice and wisdom, and prepare us for the joy of the day of your coming. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The reading today is from Zephaniah chapter 1, uh, verses 7 and 12 through 18. Be silent before the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice. He has consecrated his guest. At that time, I will search Jerusalem with lamps, and I will punish the people who rest complacently on their dregs, those who say in their hearts, the Lord will not do good, nor will he do harm. Their wealth shall be plundered and their houses laid waste. Though they build houses, they shall not inhabit them. Though they plant vineyards, they shall not drink wine from them. The great day of the Lord is near, near and hastening fast. The sound of the day of the Lord is bitter. The warrior cries aloud there. That day will be a day of wrath, a day of distress and anguish, a day of ruin and devastation a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet blast and battle cry against the fortified cities and against the lofty battlements. I will bring such distress upon the people that they shall walk like the blind because they have sinned against the Lord. Their blood shall be poured out like dust and their flesh like dung. Neither their silver nor their gold will be able to save them on the day of the Lord's wrath. In the fire of his passion, the whole earth shall be consumed. For a full, a terrible end he will make of all the inhabitants of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you, Leah. So Pastor Cindy is... Um, the chaplain this weekend of a youth event up in Eagle Eyrie for middle school kids, uh, lost and found, and she's there for the week as the chaplain and worship leader. Come on up, guys. So, um, did you listen to what Leah was reading from Zephaniah? That's a kind of a different name. Different. Do you guys know many Zephaniahs? I only know one Zephaniah. Well, I know this Zephaniah, but I, I had a friend of mine in, in high school named this Zephaniah. We called him Zeph. So it was easier than remember Zephaniah. But Zephaniah is talking to the people because um, they're not doing things right. They're kind of wasting their days and their time and their efforts and their, and their gifts. Did you know that every one of you has a gift that God's given you? Well, I'm, and many gifts. We all have many gifts that God gives us. And sometimes we... We understand them and we try to use them for good. And sometimes we don't really appreciate them and we, don't, we waste them. We don't use them well. And that's when God, God is very disappointed and kind of sad when he gives us something of great worth and we're kind of like, yeah, whatever. We put it aside. It's like, it's like getting too many gifts at Christmas. Can, is that possible? No, 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 I didn't think so. But it, it is possible. It, it, it can be so, such a point that if there's so many gifts, you lose track if you don't remember who gave what gifts. When Josh celebrated his first Christmas, okay, he was, he was born into our, into our church, and, and there were a lot of people that just loved him. He was, oh, he was, he was just a sweet kid. And so guess, guess how many gifts he got for, at Christmas time? Over 50. Yeah, yeah. He wasn't even one yet. And he got 50 gifts. You know, pastor didn't get anything. But anyway, that's okay. Um, <laughs> but he got so many gifts that he was overwhelmed because we couldn't open 50 gifts on Christmas Day. I mean, he had, he had to take a nap every so often. It was so much excitement. So we actually opened gifts for the 12 days of Christmas. We put 
you know, but that still was four, maybe five gifts a day. And you know, when you're a kid, you just want to tear open that box and wrap it up. Well, you know what happened? Some of those gifts got put into the back room and we almost forgot about them because, oh, there were so many. And when, when we found them, it was like, oh, Christmas in July. <laughs> God has given you so many gifts. Gavin, God has given you, let me think of some of your gifts. God has given you the gift of being a big brother to Naomi. That's a gift. God has given you the gift of being a younger brother to these two. That's a gift. God has given you the ability to speak, to think, to learn, to grow, to help. All these are gifts that God's given you. I know you might rather have a you know, switch or something else. Or not, not that kind of switch. We're talking about Nintendo. And anyway, um, so God gives us these gifts. And all he asks is that we use them. Use them for what their purpose is. Not just for ourselves, but so that others can benefit from that which we've been given. So, I know Christmas is coming, and Gavin wants, like, do you want like 60 gifts for Christmas? 70. See, he has the gift of math. He knows how to increase. Okay, he wants one big gift. Yeah, yeah one good, big bag. Like one gigantic good gift. Like okay. We, 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 yeah, 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 don't let your mom figure it out. Okay. Okay. You're only getting one gift, Gavin. Sorry. It's just it's not sorry. That's your brother. I said one big. Yeah, I know. I know. Let's pray. Let's pray. That's a gift. God, we thank you for the gifts you've given us, and we ask you, God, to help us to use them, to use them for others and to your glory. Give us the joy of using the gifts you've given us. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks, guys, for coming up. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. The gospel this morning comes to us from St. Matthew, the 25th chapter beginning with the 14th verse. The Holy Gospel according, I'm sorry, it says Matthew. It's actually John, the 25th chapter. Glory to you, O God. Matthew. Jesus said to the disciples, For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five went off at once and traded them uh, and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid the master's money. And after a long time, the master of the slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who received the five talents came forward bringing more talents. Five, and he said, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. Master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid. And I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, you have what is yours. But his master replied, you wicked and lazy slave. You knew, did you, that I reap where I do not slow, so, and gather where I did not scatter. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all who have, more will be given. And they will have an abundance, but from those who have nothing, even when they have what, what they have, will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into, into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So this harsh landowner 
reacts to his servants when they don't take what he gives them and use them, uses them to the fullest potential. Although the first receives five talents, as much as the last, each receives a significant amount of money. A talent at the time of Jesus was equal to about 6,000 denarii. And one denarius was a common laborer's daily wage. A talent would be equivalent to approximately 20 years of wages for the average worker. 20 years of wages. Five talents, the amount trusted to one of the servants, is comparable to 100 years worth of labor. You can imagine that was quite a lot. In today's parable, Jesus uses the parable to help us understand that our, our calling as Christians and our responsibility to use what God has given us to bring him glory and honor is a great gift. And we have the most valuable gift of all, the word of God and, and the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The gift that we can share with others through our words and actions, a great responsibility but a great reward is described in the parable. It's important to understand the importance of the Word of God in our lives, even, even if we don't daily read it. It has an impact on our lives when we hear it, when we think on it, and pray in it, and put it into application. First published over 500 years ago, Martin Luther's translation of the New Testament from its original language, Greek and some Aramaean, uh, into German was, was revolutionary. Luther sought to help ordinary people understand the New Testament and apply it in their lives, to take the gift of God's word, to take the gift of what God has given us and apply it not only for our benefit, but more to God's glory as we share it with others in word and deed. And just so you put that in, in understanding, when Luther translated it, at the time of Luther, uh, the Bible was in its original languages, Greek, Aramaic, and the Old Testament Hebrew. But very few people, uh, especially in, in, in Europe, read those three languages. So they relied either on the Latin translation, which was called the Vulgate, or just hearing the word, spoken to them, but they didn't get it in their language. So Luther felt compelled to translate it into German. What's interesting, Luther's Bible, when it was first published over 500 years ago, became a primer for teaching German to the masses. There were not many, many books in German available to the average person. And so it was used for over a hundred years to help teach German to the uneducated. So Luther wrote in the preface uh, to the New Testament these words. The chief article and foundation of the gospel is that before you take Christ as an example, you accept and recognize him as a gift, as a present that God has given you, and that is your own. This means that when you see or hear of Christ doing or suffering something, you do not doubt that Christ himself with his deeds and suffering belongs to you. On this, you may depend as surely as you had done it yourself. Indeed, if you were Christ himself. That's how important it was for Luther. He went on to write, See, this is what it means to have a proper grasp of the gospel. That is of the overwhelming goodness of God, which neither prophet nor apostle nor angel was ever able fully to express, and which no heart could adequately fathom or marvel at. This is the great fire, the love of God for us. So the good steward, the faithful steward, was one that took whatever God gave him or what the master gave him, 
and sought to utilize it, manipulate it, which is, manipulation's not a bad word, it means to, to move and to function and to, to make things happen. He manipulated those five talents into five more. He doubled the Im impact of the gift he was given so that others might benefit from it. You see, God does that with us. God's gifts that God gives you have a way of making your life better. And as you receive them, whatever that gift is, and then share them with the world in need, that gift has a tendency to multiply. Think about the gift of love. We receive it from God as a precious gift found in that manger, in that lowly child. But we take that love that God has for us and God gives in us, and we share it with others, we make the world around us a little bit better. And then those people that receive that can also share God's love. It has the ability not only to grow, but to explode in its potential. And that's what God is asking for us to do. To be understanding of the God, gifts that God has given us. The gifts that God has given us. And utilize them, use them, see in them a potential of great worth. And put into application the gift we've been given, that we share, use, and prosper with to the glory of God. That's what it means to be faithful. Faithful. And what does faithfulness look like in a time of waiting? Carla Works of Wesley Theological Seminary in D.C. states, in Matthew's Gospel, faithfulness is emulating the ministry of Jesus. Jesus has announced the arrival of God's kingdom by feeding the hungry, curing the sick, blessing the meek, and serving the least. All who would follow Jesus are to preach the good news of the kingdom to the whole world by going about the work the master has called them to do. And this work includes visiting the sick and the imprisoned, clothing the naked, welcoming the stranger, feeding the hungry. And those who are found faithful may hear their master say, well done, good and faithful servant. This morning we're baptizing two cousins, Liam and Pierce. And they're beginning their life of faith here at Christ Lutheran Church in the waters of their baptism. And a good friend of mine in Utah gave me a great metaphor of, of the value of baptism. It's as if when you are baptized into the family of God, regardless of the day or time or your age or understanding, it is as if God has placed in your account a billion dollars. A billion dollars. Now, you might say, that's a lot. That's an incredible amount. <laughs> so is God's love for you. It has a vast, vast store of the ability to impact your life, but also through you to impact the lives of others for the good. It has a baptized child of God, you are viewed as something of great worth. You, as a matter of fact, a billion's not enough because in the eyes of God, you are priceless. And the potential in you is out of this world. Live your life. Live your life as if you understood the value of the gift that God has given you. Use those gifts to know that there is God in you and that through you and through your efforts, you, through God's love, can be a part of a change that overcomes all the hardships in the world. Living your life in peace can bring peace to the Middle East in time, living your life in service and care, can lift up the lives of the downtrodden, can give hope 
to the captive and peace to the child in a war-torn area. You have great potential in you because sisters and brothers, God's love in you has no bounds. So live, live so God can use you because it's the gift of God in you that God is using. So live, live so God can use you. Anywhere, anyhow, anytime. Amen. to God, our breath and our life, as we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Gracious God, you give talents and gifts to all your people, and you equip the church to serve. Turn us from fear and self-serving ways that we use our talents to glorify you and encourage our neighbor. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You have been our dwelling place from one generation to another. Sustain the life of the planet. Protect farmlands and harvests. Direct all people in wise stewardship of all the Earth's resources. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, mercy is great. You call us to honesty and integrity. Instill these values in the hearts of all nations and their leaders. Free any who are oppressed. Expose all corruption and bring redemption to victims of injustice. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Lord, continue to be with us. Teach us to count our days that we may gain a wise heart, and where there is sickness or sorrow, bring healing. And where there is loneliness, reveal your love. We remember especially, Lord, today, Terry and Sean, the people in Sudan, Ukraine, Israel and Palestine. We pray, Lord, for the youth and Pastor Sidney at Lost and Found. 
for Teresa and Tina, for Pete and Sharon, Megan, Kevin, and Sheila. Continue, Lord, to be with Julie and Tim, Don, and all our new members. Be with the people of Lewiston, Maine. Strengthen Carolyn. Bring healing to Betty. Continue to bless Cody and Renee. And be with Susie and Ned. And Lord, from our hearts, we lift up those before you from our hearts and our minds in need of healing and your presence. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for the faith formation ministries of our church. Give to all children, youth, and adults who study your word the breastplate, the breastplate of faith and love. Shape us by your love and show us how to encourage one another. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Gracious God, you were faithful in all generations for the promise of life and rest and for the witness of those who have died in faith, especially John and Greg. We praise your goodness. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Be with all families who mourn your faithful who have died. Be with the Freemans, the Killingers, the Clevens. Let them know your presence is sure and your love is great. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, mercy is great. We, often, we offer our spoken prayers and those held in our hearts, trusting in your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share with one another a sign of God's peace. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. The Holy God, our living water, our bread of life, you created a world in which all might be satisfied by your abundance. You dined with Abraham and Sarah, promising them life and fed your people Israel with manna from heaven. You sent your son to eat with sinners and to become food for the world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. After giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life given for us and his rising from the grave, we await his coming again to share with us the everlasting feast. By your spirit, nurture and sustain us with this meal. Strengthen us to serve all in hunger and want. And by this bread and cup, make us the body of your son. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. There is a place for you at the banquet. Come and receive God's grace. Thanks be to God. For those of you online, may you celebrate with one another the body and blood of our Lord and Savior. For those in your car, you are invited to either join us here down at the curb or in your car. May God bless you with the elements you brought. And may we gather down, down at the river.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Lord Jesus, in this simple meal you have set a banquet. Sustain us on the journey, strengthen us to care for the least of your beloved children, and give us glad and generous hearts as we meet you on the way. Amen. And now may the God of all creation, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad. And the blessing of God, sovereign Savior and Spirit, be with you today and always. Amen. Amen.
And now may you go in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you.